really surprising. <laughs> Doris, I have a, a person on our team in the treasurer's office, and she has herself a princess room, and I think that sounds better. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh. I'm no princess. <laughs> that, that reminds me of that insurance commercial. And I'm oh, burning she down my she shed. <laughs> Burn down my she shed. Nobody burned down, down your she shed. shed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're having a load of fun. There's Jim. Even though I've seen that commercial a thousand times, I fall out laughing every time. It's <laughs> good. Yep. That and the gummy bears, the people around the boardroom table with the gummy bears, the adults, yes. the yeah. talk like kids. <laughs> Does anyone know what those commercials are for? <laughs> Gummy bears. <laughs> yeah. Do bears or balls? I get confused. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was boom. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Hey, there's John. <laughs> He's or muted too. He is muted. <clears throat> okay. The June 16th, 2020 meeting of the City Council of the City of Springfield, Illinois is called to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, the flag, to the flag of the United States of America, of America and, to the republic, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. If, clerk, if you please call the roll. Alderman Redpath. Here. Alderman Gregory. Here. Alderman Turner. Here. Alderman Fulgenzi. He's here. Alderman Crocker. Here. Alderman DeCenso. Present. Alderman McMiniman. Here. Alderman Connolly. Present. Alderman Donlin. Here. Alderman Hanauer. Here. Mayor Langfelder. Here. Mr. Mayor, a quorum is present. Thank you. Uh, this week we. Uh, hit the point of uh, unfortunate tragic point of the coronavirus pandemic where actually over 115,000 people had died which you know if you it equates to over the Springfield's population so with that I'd ask that everybody uh, pause for a moment of silence to remember those not only uh, reached that tragic demise but also the families that have been impacted and those that have been impacted by this uh, terrible illness. Thank you. And it's a reminder, it's, uh, you know, other states as they're opening up, we're heading into phase four within the next uh, week or two. And so it's important that we always uh, continue to remind others of uh, the importance of the social distancing, uh, making sure we wear face coverings when we're within six feet or in public places of others, and then also keep, uh, you know, washing our hands because right now there's no vaccination. And that's the importance of the uh, social distancing, and, and that's going to be for the remainder of the year. So as uh, Springfield and Illinois uh, moves forward in that fashion, it's incumbent upon all of us to keep that in mind so we don't have the re-escalation that other states have been uh, experiencing. So thank you very much. Now we'll uh, go into the zoning portion of our meeting. The first item on the agenda is document number 2020-023. For the property located at 1112 East Enos, petitioner is Avery Properties and Management, present zoning classifications S1, Neighborhood and Commercial and Office District, Section 155.030, requested zoning relief of variance of Section 155.157, discontinuance of use to remodel a vacant single-family residence permitting a continued use of the property as a non-conforming single-family residence located on the first floor in an S1 neighborhood office commercial district. 
Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation is approval. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the recommendation of the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff. Chair will entertain a motion. Motion to approve the recommendation. Second. Been moved by Alderman Gregory to approve the uh, Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation and seconded by Alderman Donlin. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Clerk. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. <clears throat> Alderwoman Turner. You're muted, Doris. Sorry, yes. Thank you. Alderman Fulgenzi. Alderman Proctor. Yes. Alderwoman DeCenso. Yes. Alderman McMiniman. Yes. Alderwoman Connolly. Yes. Alderman Donlin. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Yes. Mayor Langfelder. Yes. 11 yeses and no noes. The zoning request passes. 11 no. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2020-024 for the property located at 1000 West Vine Street. Petitioner is William C. Harvey. Present zoning classification R1, single family residence, district section 155.016. Requested zoning relief, a variance of section 155.061, basic yard requirements to construct in addition with an attached garage to the west side of the existing dwelling structure to within 10 feet of the rear yard and eight feet, nine inches from the north yard uh, setback while tearing down the existing detached garage. The existing structure has an existing east front yard setback of approximately 26 feet, 10 inches, and petitioner seeks to allow this setback of 20, 26 feet and 10 inches instead of the required 30 feet as required uh, for the front yard setback. Sangamon County, Springfield, Co Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation is approval. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the recommendation of the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff. Chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to accept the petition as filed. Second. Second. It's been moved by Alderman McMinimum to accept the petition as filed and second by Alderman Hanauer. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion will vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The clerk will now call the roll. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderwoman Turner. Yes. <coughs> Alderman Fulgenzi. Alderman Proctor. Uh, yes. Alderwoman DeCenso. Yes. Alderman McMiniman. Yes. Alderwoman Connolly. Yes. Alderman Donnelly. <coughs> Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Yes. Mayor Langfelder. Yes. 11 yeses and no noes. And the zoning request passes. This time the chair will recognize Treasurer Busher for the presentation of the financial report. Thank you, Mayor Langfelder. The corporate fund in the month of May had a beginning balance of $16,925,094. We took in total receipts of $8,375,986. We had total disbursements in the month of May of $11,792,006, which left the corporate fund with an ending balance in the month of May of $13,509,074. This concludes my report, Mayor Langfelder. Thank you. Is there a motion for approval, please? So move. Second. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion vote yes, or say aye. 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 Opposed say nay, <clears throat> motion carries. We do not have any presentations tonight. So the chair will entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the June 2nd, 2020 regular city council meeting and approve the minutes. So moved. Second. 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 Been moved and second, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council reading, first reading of ordinances in the record of the city council meeting. So move. Second. 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 Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 229, I want to vote present. Okay. Noted. Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Nay. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. The chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council reading of the consent agenda into the record of this city council meeting. So moved. 
second. Second. It's been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say 229 nay. 229 on both present. Okay, 229. Noted. <coughs> Chair will entertain a motion to place consent agenda on the final passage. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor of the consent agenda vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The clerk will now call the roll. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderwoman Turner. Yes. Alderman Fulgenzi. Aye. Alderman Except Proctor. 229. Noted. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Three times. <laughs> Noted, sir. Alderman Proctor. Yes. Alderwoman DeCenso. Yes. Alderman McMenamin. I want to. Aye. Alderwoman Connolly. Yes. Alderman Donlin. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Mayor Langfelder. Aye. 11 ayes and no nays. Senate agenda passes. Agenda number 2017 1073, 2018 1010, 2019 0082, 2019 430, 220 049, 220 067, 220 134, 220 153, 220 158, 220 159, 220 160, 220 or 2020 rather, I should be saying 2020 on all those for the record. 2020 2020-161, 2020-162, 2020-163, 2020-184, 2020-181, 2020-195, 2020-207, and 2020-231 remain tabled or in committee. Is there any motion on that? Mr. Mayor, uh, I make a motion that we pull 2020-158 through 2020-164 for council consideration. Second the motion. We move and second to <coughs> uh, move out of committee 2020-158 through 2020-164. And these all pertain to the uh, Housing Council uh, Advisory Council appointments. Any discussion? Yes, Mayor, I, I think it's important that we either vote these up or vote them down. Uh, everybody has their own opinions on how we want to proceed on this and uh, let's just, if you don't want to vote for them, don't vote for them. If you do, let's do, let's get this moving. Okay. Alderwoman Desenzo. Yes, we have two ordinances on first reading that deal with how we're going to move forward with boards and commissions. So I think those should be considered before we vote on these. One is the requirement to live in the city of Springfield and the other is the um, requirement that anyone, any one person only serves on one board or commission. So I think those two need to be voted on and decided by the council before we move forward with any future appointments. I think we can each individually take those proposed ordinances into consideration as we make our vote to uh, tonight on these nominations. Um, if there's been a motion and a second to place Alderman Redpath, did you make a motion to place these ordinances on debate agenda? I, I said for consideration, but they can be on the debate agenda. That's I'll second that motion for debate agenda, and um, I suppose unless there's more discussion, we can vote on that on the motion. Any other discussion? I, I understand uh, Alderman uh, DeCenso's concerns, and I agree with her. By the way, that's that's the uh, that's a. I wish they would have been in front of us before that. Um, I, I can tell you that there's people, a couple of people on here I'm not voting for, but there's people that on here that I will, and uh, some of them are first are, are only going to be on one committee, and they do live in the city. So we, I think we owe them a, a vote. That's. Thank you. Any other discussion? I got a question. Alderman Hanauer. So if uh, we vote, them, let's just say, so if someone gets voted down, can they be can they be reappointed after the the new um, um, the new ordinances are in effect, or are they they out? How does council. that work? That's why we should wait. The, uh, uh, if you're asking if an appointment is uh, not uh, affirmed, you know, by city council, 
is that person eligible to be uh, nominated again for a position? The answer would be right. yes. Because I, I'm, I'm kind of apt to, to, to wait, but, but it's whatever. Um. So any other discussion? Oh, Alderman Donlin. Just uh, I know some of a couple of the aldermen in particular had some concerns about uh, the process and the names in the past. Has there been any dialogue since we last met, whether it was, I think it was last week, discussed it? Has there been any conversation? As far as? Like between you and your staff and, and the, I think there were two aldermen in particular that had some issues. Yeah, the uh, one issue that was brought up was with regards to the renter. Um, and then recently over the appointments that came that resurfaced or I guess brought, was brought up at the last council meeting with regards to the uh, either the residency and with regards to residency, just to clarify for myself, I always felt that uh, and the reason you have residency for employees is because their salaries, well actually the retirement or their pensions are paid 100% from our property taxes. Unlike a volunteer, uh, you know, uh, they're volunteering their time. And so I view that as a different situation, but I understand uh, the uh, views of uh, Alderwoman Turner brought it up and we did present a, one of the ordinances that was, uh, that is being considered on first reading tonight. The other one with two committees, I know uh, there's one in particular, I think there's value of having someone serve on two committees that have the uh, background associated with uh, zoning and so from that standpoint uh, what we're trying to do is uh, get people that will hit the ground running uh, with regards to uh, vacated properties you know we struggled with that for a long period of time as well as development in the TIFs and that's why you know the ones that I appointed I think they're strong individuals that should be considered uh, with regards to my original uh, bringing them forward and outlining in numerous emails things of that nature. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, uh, Alderman Turner, then Alderman Redpath. Uh, I, well, you really answered, I was gonna answer uh, Alderman Donlin's question. Um, so I did bring forward the, the uh, ordinance that says that uh, members of boards and commissions must reside within the city. And, and uh, I will point out that uh, Mayor Langfelder joined me as a co-sponsor of that ordinance, as well as Alderman McMiniman. Um, and um, I know that we received, um, uh, Bonnie forwarded, um, I think five or six letters of support today for, for, from individuals uh, for one of the candidates. And I would just say that uh, I appreciate her forwarding those letters, but we also received, or at least I received a number of, of uh, letters, texts and emails supporting the fact that it's, it's a, a bit absurd for a non-city resident to be formulating policy for city residents. And, and that's basically what boards and commissions do. They formulate policy. So I just think that um, city policies that residents are going to be governed by should be formulated by city residents. And I do support um, Alderwoman Connolly and Alderwoman DeCenso in their uh, thought that an individual should only serve on one board or commission. I think that there are many people in Springfield that are interested in uh, volunteering and serving the city of Springfield through memberships on boards and commissions. I know I get um, inquiries all the time from people that are interested in serving on either city or county boards and commissions. So. The people are out there. Um, I think that one of the problems that I have been harping on, and I harped on this all the time when I was on the county board, is that if we are ever going to change the dynamic of city government, we have to enlarge our circle of the people that we reach out to. We have to include many more people in the conversation. We have to invite many more people to the table. If we continue to just listen to the same old voices and if we continue to just go to the usual suspects, um, so to speak, we're going to hear the hear the same thing and, and we're just going to be, um, you know, kind of running in place. So I think that we have a responsibility to enlarge our circle and invite 
uh, differing diverse voices to the table and not just keep, you know, rounding up the usual suspects. Alderman Redpath. Obviously, there's still some concern by the majority. So I, my motion is to bring it off the table for consideration. I think that's probably appropriate for us to vote for, and then majority will rule if we uh, go any further with it to the debate agenda or not. So with that, I, I would call the question for the consideration to bring it off the table. Okay. All Second. In favor? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is 2020-152, an ordinance accepting the proposal submitted by Knight EA Inc. for design engineering comprised of plans, specifications, and estimates for intersections, improvements, and signal design of Cokey Mill at Greenbrier in an amount not to exceed $56,400 for the Office of Public Works. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-152 on final passage. So move. Uh, second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? I think we have an amendment. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So, uh, amendment number one, and I'll just read this. It's an ordinance accepting the proposal uh, before us. And uh, what is the change on the amendment? Uh, sir, it is a technical correction on the account number uh, that uh, okay. should be referenced in the ordinance. So, it is a technical uh, change as to the to, to set forth the proper account number. It's in red on yep. the uh, attachment. No other changes. In section two. Yes, sir. Is there a motion on the amendment? So moved. So moved. Second. 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 Move and second. Any discussion on the amendment? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. <clears throat> Any discussion on the ordinance as amended? All those in favor of the motion, vote uh, vote on the ordinance as amended. Vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The clerk will now call the roll. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderwoman Turner. Yes. Alderman Fulgenzi. Aye. Alderman Proctor. Yes. Alderwoman DeCenso. Yes. Alderman McMiniman. Yes. Alderwoman Conley. Yes. Alderman Donlin. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Yes. Ten ayes and no nays, Mayor. Thank you. The motion carries as amended. Next item on the agenda is number two, or 2020-227, ordinance authorizing execution of an annexation agreement for the city of Springfield and Rodney J. Heron and John O. Watson for property located at Panther Creek Drive. The chair will entertain a motion to recess the regular meeting of the city council to hold a public hearing regarding this annexation so agreement. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? The public hearing is now open. Or I'm sorry, all in favor of the public aye. hearing say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Public hearing is now open. Does anyone wish to address the council regarding this annexation agreement? I don't know if anybody's zoomed in to, uh, do we know? Uh, Tom Chi, is there anybody in the waiting room that wanted to speak to the annexation? I'll take that as a no. The chair will entertain a motion to adjourn the public hearing and reconvene the regular meeting of the city council. Um, I'm sorry, there is a, uh, let's see. No, I don't have anybody signed up for, no, not this one. Thank you. The chair will entertain a motion to adjourn the public hearing and reconvene the regular meeting of the city council. Second. Been moved and second, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-227 on final passage. So moved. Second. Second. If moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion vote yes. All those opposed vote no. The clerk will now call the roll. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderwoman Turner. Aye. Alderman Fulgenzi. Aye. Alderman Proctor. Yes. Alderwoman DeCenso. Yes. Alderman McMiniman. Yes. Alderwoman mm -hmm. Connolly. Yes. Alderman Donlin. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Yes. Ten yeses and no noes, Mayor. And I vote yes as well. Um, I'm sorry. For Mayor. that. Mayor Light, the, uh, 11. Thank you. The ordinance passes 11 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is 2020-228. 
An ordinance annexing certain described real property located on Panther Creek Drive. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-228 on final passage. So moved. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. <laughs> those opposed, vote no. The vote, or the clerk will now call the votes. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderwoman Turner. Yes. Alderman Fulgenzi. Yes. Alderman Proctor. Yes. Alderwoman DeCenso. Yes. Alderman McMiniman. Aye. Alderwoman Connolly. Yes. Alderman Donnellan. Aye. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Yes. No. Yes. <coughs> Mayor Langfelder. Yes. 11 yeses and no noes, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Thank Mayor, you. a point of order. What did we do with the ordinances with the nominations to the Housing Council? I thought oh. we had called the question. Um, I'm sorry, skip right over those. Okay, all right. So we're going we to get back to them. them. We uh, do have the ordinance coming up, so. Okay, that's okay. We'll just take it at that yeah. time if that's all right. That's fine. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is number 2020-230, an ordinance approving the appointing of Lakeisha K. Purchase to the Springfield Economic Development Commission. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-230 on final passage. Point of order. Yes, Alderman Repath. Shouldn't we, if we're going to hold all of them, hold them all till the appointments are, until we come get through with the, those two ordinances that we're concern, concerned with? <laughs> Yeah, this one's a uh, different committee. It, it's still somebody being appointed to a committee. That one, and okay. there's another one on 235. It's, it's not that I'm opposed to the people. I just think right. if we're going to do it, we ought to hold the ball. Okay. It, well, we can do that. Well, I'm further confused. I, I thought we were going to The I, motion was to pull them off the held in committee and put them on for a vote tonight. I understand, I understand your confusion. That was... The, what I said is we my motion was to pull them off the for, floor for consideration and I thought we were going to vote on that also and and I I don't think that the votes are there to pass it to get it off the floor so that's I think we just moved on but I think we do need a vote on that mayor just to clarify right we'll do them all together is that what you want to do no my motion on the first ones was to bring it off the off, out of the out of committee for consideration. Right. We never did vote on that, so that that's got to be that's got to be a vote that has to take place because I don't I think the majority the don't want to bring them out of committee. I'm just guessing. Yeah, we voted to bring them out of committee. <coughs> no, we voted. No, we did. No, we didn't. Let's call right. the question. Call the question, Mayor. We voted on the call of the question. Okay, now I'm confused. <laughs> yeah. Mayor, you, what, what, what happened was Alderman Red. Okay. If you don't mind, sir. So we'll go ahead and. So the, so I was going to say, if you would like to, just just so the record is clear, uh, if you would like to make a motion now to uh, remove uh, those items 158 through 163 and place them on the debate agenda, then you would have a vote on whether or not to. Exactly, do that. and that's what we didn't do, so we have to do that right now. So, so okay. if someone makes a motion in a second, the motion is to remove them com for a committee to put them on the debate agenda. So. Okay, thank you. And I seconded that before. I, I'm going to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> we, we just got kind of tied up there. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. No. No. Nay. no. We'll do a roll call vote. <laughs> Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Nay. Alderwoman Turner. No. Alderman Fulgenzi. Aye. Alderman Proctor. No. Alderwoman DeCenso. No. Alderman McMiniman. Yes. Alderwoman Connolly. No. Alderman Donlin. No. Alderman Hanauer. No. Three yeses, seven noes, Mayor. So back to the question on 230 now, Mayor. I think that we, if we're going to hold all of them, we should hold all of them until we get through with those two ordinances. If that's that's with probably more appropriate action. With that, I make a motion one? we send that back to committee. To Second uh, that. And 230. Uh, the reason for this? To wait. If we're going to if we're going to do it, we better we need to do it for the the two um, ordinances that are coming up. To make and keep everybody on the same playing field. And I know they're out on the same committee, Mayor, but they, they are appointments and they're going to be affected by the new rules. 
Well, yeah, but this one wouldn't uh, be impacted at all because uh, she's stepping off the Historic Sites Commission and this would be the new uh, committee that she'd serve on. Alderman McMinima. You know, I, I think we're really doing a disservice to our volunteers that wish to serve on our committees. They've been held and held and held. Some of these nominee, nominees live in our city and only would be serving on one commission or board. I think we should go through these one by one like Alden Redpath first suggested and those that we can approve, we approve. If someone's got an objection to any of them, they can state their objection. We have to, you know, we can't treat people like this to get nominated where they get passed over and passed over. It's just a disservice to our volunteers. So uh, I agree with Alden Redpath. What, what we should have done is vote on those that we can vote on. You, you know, and my point was to do that, but, you know, majority rules and the, the majority of the council does not want to do that, Joe. So we have, I think it's appropriate to, to go on with the two new ordinances that are coming. But I think my, my whole idea is that if we're going to hold th those, we need to hold all appointments until we get through those two ordinances. That's, that's all I'm saying. Alderman Gregory. Uh, yes, I, I, do, I do think um, I'm holding, holding these would be... Um, appropriate um, until we until we pass the other two ordinances, as as it will affect um, some on the on the uh, housing policy. Of course, these two um, um, that are coming up, they 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 meet and everything. But it would be appropriate to pass that first, and then um, come back and, and and get everybody approved or, or denied, um, get everything in place. So I, I you know I, I get it, um, Alderman McMenamin and. Um, but we're such we're we're in such a delicate space with with the change of our city. We got to take our time with this, and and I think those people who are waiting on appointments or not appointments, uh, you know, want it done right and and and, and want to come into something that that is going to truly move our, our our city forward. Um, not that we've done whatever type of job, but but we know we we have some improvements to make. So, you know, I'm 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 fully with getting it all set. And then, and then we'll come back to these appointments and, you know, a little bit of time won't hurt them. We want to get this right. Thank you. Any other discussion? I guess the one thing I'd point out is we've had this discussion for probably months now, and hopefully this is the last hurdle we have to make because there's renters, nobody brought up uh, some of the other objections, and then they progressed. So we just hope that this will be the last hurdle that we have to uh, go through because we are in the middle of a pandemic. And so uh, with regards to development, everybody knows the importance of that. Uh, there are grant funds uh, that are coming to fruition. And it's important that we move forward in that uh, proactive measure. And, uh, you know, uh, waiting a couple weeks, uh, you know, we waited a couple months, so I'm not sure if that will matter much, but hopefully this is the last hurdle. If there's any other objections, uh, please submit them in writing uh, to Jeanette uh, uh, or myself so we can move forward and uh, put the <clears throat> committees in place once and for all. So we would appreciate that. Mayor, with, with all due respect, there we have boards and commissions that haven't met in a year. Mm -hmm. There's no sense of urgency right now. We're, let's do this right. No, we are doing it right. And so uh, this is a very important one, as you know, economic development. The other one's a housing committee. And I would implore all aldermen, and I think some of you have stated to me how difficult it is to get individuals to volunteer, uh, because it is demanding. And especially now with the uh, coronavirus, people are afraid to go out. I mean, that's uh, one of the other uh, variables that we have to deal with. So it'd be important that uh, we do get volunteers. We want that broad perspective, as Alderwoman Turner had said. Uh, so it's incumbent upon all of us to uh, help in that effort. So we appreciate it. Mr. Mayor. Alderman McMinimal. I'd just like to further comment that we're kind of opening up a can of worms when we talk about uh, double nominations. For example, some of our aldermen, myself included, by virtue of intergovernmental agreements and city code, we serve on this council and we serve, let's say, on the zoning commission or we serve on the uh, health, county health department. Um, and there's other double representations there. So I think we have to think this through. I think um, we don't want to set up a double standard. Oh, Alderman can serve on two. 
but our citizens that might have great expertise cannot. I think it really, and we're, I'm starting to debate already one of the ordinances that we're going to talk about in two weeks. By the way, we don't meet next week, right. so the first vote on these nominees will be now three weeks again from today. And I think you invited the nominees to be present for this meeting or available. So, again, I, I think we're treating our nominees badly here. And uh, as far as getting things right, um, we have to get things right with our nominees, too. So I think the, the, the ordinances are not, you know, clear cut on their face as far as the, the, the ordinances that we're talking about, one that would restrict uh, nominees to residency. I think that one makes a lot of sense. But I think the other one needs to, a careful review uh, for reasons stated that our intergovernmental agreements actually mandate double representation. Uh, so that's enough said about that. It's totally different. Oh, Alderman Turner. Unmute. Oh. All right. I think I think Alderman McMiniman is a little confused. No city council member serves on two city boards or commissions. Uh, I think he's probably referencing myself. I serve as a member of the Springfield City Council, and I serve as a member of the Sangamon County Board of Health. So I serve on a city council, and I serve on a county board of health. But no alder person serves on to city boards and commissions. And, and I, I just think that, again, we, we live in a city of over 100,000 people. And we really need to have diverse voices at, at the table. And if you look at, and this predates Mayor Langfelder. I, I don't, this, I'm not, this is not, um, uh, this is not anything shining a light on Mayor Langfelder and his appointments. This predates Mayor Langfelder. But if you go back, if you go back 10, 10 years and look at the list of people who serve on boards and commissions, I guarantee you that it's very limited with regard to um, diversity, diversity with regard to age, race, uh, gender, uh, geographic area of residency, it's, it's very limited. And we, again, we do ourselves as well as our city a disservice if we don't expand the voices that are at, that are at these tables. Mr. Mayor, I got to, sure. you I'll know, I completely agree that we want broad representation. We want to get as many qualified persons to serve as, 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 as possible. But I don't like to be con called a confused. I, I think that's kind of a personal comment. I think I read the proposed ordinance, and it's not specific to county or city or joint representation. It simply says no person can serve as a member on more than one board, commission, or council at any one time. Now, maybe that language will get clarified down the road, but I did read the proposed ordinance, and I do know what I'm talking about, and I don't like to be but, called confused in public. But, but why would, but you are confused, because why would the city council have a, a city ordinance talking about appointing people to a Sangamon County board? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, I know you want to buttress your, your opinion and your, and your, you know, what you're, and your argument, but it doesn't make any sense that we would have an ordinance that says, no, we're not going to appoint someone to a, a Sangamon County board. We, we can't do that. I stand by what I said. Me too. <laughs> so, any other uh, discussion? All those in favor of sending the uh, ordinance number 2020-230 back to committee, say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Nay. The motion passes. Next item on the agenda is number 2020-232, an ordinance amending chapter 39, section 39.12, chapter 98, section 98.999, chapter 170.10.999, and section 170.17.399 of the 1988 City of Springfield Code of Ordinances as amended pertaining to the Code of Violations and Penalty. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-232 on final passage. So moved. Um, second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yeah, Mayor. Alderman Hanauer. Thank you. Um, 
I, after discussion with Mr. Zirkel, there's there's really no amendments that I'm proposing for this. Um, but there was one talk. There was talk last week about a potential of moving it from 12 months to 24 months. Uh, I didn't. I was going to kind of leave it up to the council if they feel that's necessary or if we want to go with this for now. This is. I want to stress that hopefully this is in this is the beginning of, of the changes um, to help add add additional um, enforcement um, uh, teeth. I, I call it teeth, you know, uh, to to help our our inspectors and the idea of stopping people from getting out of out of uh, fines because they wait 30 days or right before um, right before the uh, admin court to uh, to abate it it's not fair to the neighbors and hopefully we can get this um, you know we've got other issues with that we need to, to work on as well but this is a kind of a first step and I know uh, Alderwoman uh, Conley is is looking at some other things and you know there's some things you know as as this progresses we we may have to tweak it but i didn't know what people thought from the 12 month or 24 month i'm i'm happy with leaving it as it is and, and let's let's give it a uh, some time and if, if we have to address it later we can alderman redpath um, Alderman Hanauer, this is a good ordinance, and uh, I know the majority of the council sponsors it. But uh, there's one provision that I'm concerned with is I have habitual offenders now on a list. And, Daryl, maybe you can address this, but I have a habitual offenders on the list, as some of the other aldermen do. Um, is, are we starting this today or when it's approved or is it going to be are we going to go because because we have a track record of, of habitual problems and that takes that that gives them a brand new fresh start which means they should be on level two or level three already and uh, some of them are pretty aggressive so yeah. corporate that would council, be council. Clarify very that. briefly the whenever you're dealing with fines it's going to be prospective only you cannot make a fine retroactive so uh, this uh, would go forward with referrals after the effective date of the ordinance. Uh, as uh, Alderman Hanauer mentioned, this is, a, this is a significant sea change because historically the city has pursued compliance, you know, which is why the original uh, provisions in the city code have been there for uh, some time, uh, so many years. Uh, just as one example, last year, uh, this would have changed the result in about between 250 and 300 cases that were ended up where compliance occurred on the first, you know, on the date of the first hearing. But under this ordinance, every one of them would have been fined instead of being dismissed. By the first hearing, you mean the admin court hearing? Yes. Okay. Well, and, and real so, quick, Chuck, if I'm you don't sorry, mind, how, how long, how, how often is admin court in session? Is it weekly? Twice, is it monthly? Twice, twice a month. Uh, it could be three times if you include SPD. Okay, but in, in the case of code violations, not... Twice a month. So if someone someone could te theoretically, they could go three weeks without, before, with, without abating something. Well, the way this is, uh, the, the first appearance is the first hearing. So what that translates right. into is that uh, any uh, time that there's a formal referral that goes into court, that whether there's compliance or not, they're going to get fined. That's right. what this means. But, right. but my point being is that we just, sent, we just sent a city truck out to clean up a mess in one of my ward blocks. And I know that's happened in, in, in other alderman's areas too. And the bottom line is, is that they've already been fined it's not they, they've been the, i guess that's the cost of what it costs to clean up but so that's not Correct. considered there's a, a fine there's that's, a there's a recovery of costs okay. which could be actually significantly higher than a fine but and, and so my point being is that if if that situation comes up where there's health and i guess we're going to look at that at the next one the next ordinance here because of the solid waste and stuff if if it gets to the point where we have to send them out daryl has to send his team out to clean up because there's solid waste and there's health issues that's going to be in addition to the administrative fines that we're going to assess on these that folks. is correct okay 
I just want to make sure he, because he, I don't want anybody slipping through the cracks. And it's not, this is not directed at, at, at good landlords. This is directed at the people who are consistently violators. And, what and what we all this got will, the, the practical uh, prosecutorial effect of this, just for one moment, just, just for putting that hat on, uh, is that a person who gets a notice from an inspector will have to take that serious. Because if it gets end up with a referral, just like if you go to traffic court, you're going to end up with a fine. Right. There's not going to be a dismissal. So I think over time, what's going to end up happening is people will likely learn if you get the uh, notice from the inspector, they will try to comply before it gets referred. Yeah, because uh, I can tell you, once you take, it, once you get in their pocket, they start complying. They're not going to comply if they get a slap on the hand. So we got to. This has got to get. We got to be tough. And Mayor, real with this one point. Yep, one more, and then Alderman Gregory. And this, Alderman this is this. I want to. I want to make this clear. This isn't just for for rental units. This is for property. Absolutely. Throughout the city, if it doesn't matter if they rent them out or if they live in them, if there's a if there's a problem, they're going to get cited, and and it gives them seven days to clean it up. Uh, up to seven days to clean it up. It depends, you know, on on uh, if it's a. If it's a, a bad situation, they, they may only give them three or four. I, I, I don't know. I miss uh, Alderman. I misspoke. Yeah. I wasn't trying so, to direct this only at renters. Want to make it, sure it's clear. It is. So. It's for everybody. But I, I, you know, there's a lot of frustration over this whole stuff for all of us. Understand. Alderman Gregory. Yeah, I just want to speak on this because this is something I definitely deal with all day long. But from my understanding, and, and Mr. Harris can can correct me if I'm wrong, but they they're going to get a little longer than seven days. They they get about about a month to to evade something. But um, you know, and 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 we have provisions within our city code, I do believe, to address public health hazards like, you know, some trash that is, that is you know, smelly and things of that nature. So those things we can still get after in 24 hours and get them, get them out of there. And I, and I don't know how that finding works, but I do know that, that we do have a mechanism in play to, to get after it in 24 hours for certain situations. And then with the grass and, you know, um, couches and et cetera, we do try to give them the opportunity to get rid of it and they do get a little time to do it. Um, and I think that's appropriate. I think we got to give people a chance to, to, to get it out of there um, because people do go through different situations. Um, and then at that point, when we see that they they don't or won't, the, the old game used to be we clean it up a day before we go to admin court. Now, if, if, if they want them, we have to go there, which we don't like to, now they're going to get that 150 fine the first time they go to admin court. And then the second time, it's going to be 300 and on and on every time that they make it to admin court, um, which, which you know, uh, it is what it is. It's going to be about 21 to 30 days before they go there, um, you know, in, in some situations. But I do know we got other mechanisms to really hit them hard. For, for like, Chuck, your, your, your issue out there, that we, we can get on it. We just need to do it. Alderman, or Alderman Turner? Um, I... I do think this is a is a good ordinance, and I'm really excited that it's come forward because we all have many, many issues as it relates to to this um, to this topic. There's one I have, and I did talk to Autumn and Hanauer about this a little bit earlier. There is a provision in the ordinance uh, that says that if a tenant denies entry, the landlord can be excused from the fine. So um, I'm not saying that we need to look at uh, removing that now, but I would ask that Public Works keep a registry or a list of, of how often that happens so we can come back in a year and see if that is an issue. We can then look at maybe um, amending. And like I said, I did talk to Alderman Hanauer about it earlier today, and he, and he agrees. So if Public Works can just uh, monitor that and and uh, after this has been in effect for a year, if you could let us know how many times that occurred, that would be great. Sure. Alderman Donnelly. Hey, uh, thank you, Mayor. Alderman Hanauer, uh, I brought up the, I, the concept of being making this ordinance consistent with the chronic ordinance and the 
making it more restrictive with the 24 months, I'd certainly be willing to, to uh, pull that back and see how the 12 months works and, and uh, if that's your desire. I mean, I'd, I... I I wasn't married to it, but I uh, just right. thought it would be put it out there for discussion. <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm either way. I, I don't. I, I, it doesn't make any difference to me. Well, you, you said you wanted to go ahead with the way it's written. Let's, let's just, just see how it is. So. And see how anyway. it goes. Right. Alderman McMenamin, then Alderman Turner. Hey, this is a very strong ordinance, and it will change the the response we get from our <laughs> property owners. And so, Ralph, I'd like to be added as a co-sponsor, especially now that we're, there's no complicating amendments tonight, that, that we got to see how this works out. We may have to tweak this down the road. And reel them in. Reel them in, <laughs> hopefully for a good cause. And as far as, I want to repeat what's been said already tonight about how, because the public is, cons I think, confused a little bit. They think if there's a first violation, there's an automatic penalty, no. If there's a first violation and you work with our inspectors and you fix the problem and it never goes to hearing, there's no penalty, there's no fine. It's only when we have a lack of cooperation and the repairs are not made within a reasonable amount of time and it has to go to the hearing division, that's when there'll be an automatic penalty. So we just got to make sure the public understands that, that uh, we're giving everyone a, a, chance, a reasonable amount of time and opportunity to fix the problems with this ordinance. Alderman Turner? Uh, I, I think, well, see, I was jumping in to be supportive of Alderman Donlin, and I think he's pulled back on me just that quick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, uh, 24 is fine with me. That's, that's, that's what you all want to do. No, I, no, I was just going to say that, you know, when um, Alderman uh, uh, Proctor raised a really good point with uh, a similar ordinance that he had that 12 months seems like a long time but it really goes by very quickly when you're talking about these types of of offenses and so when you have the 24 months it really is a better gauge on the um how often a person offends so if if uh alderman donnellan would like to make a motion to amend the 12 months to 24 months i would certainly second that motion. just for you, just for you alderman no problem <laughs> i'd like to make that motion Changing it from 12 months to 24, 24 months. months? Yes. And second it. Any discussion? Thank you. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed, say nay. Aye. Motion or amendment passes. Any further discussion um, on the <coughs> ordinance as amended? We do have uh, Carol Needler wanted to speak. To just this. a clarification on what we just voted for. Sure. Well, there's there's four there's four amendments in this ordinance. I mean, there's four sections of code, and so and the 12 months is mentioned in three of those sections. Right. So did we just amend all three of those sections, or just one of those sections? Well, it would be all three. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah, point Scott's of order. Sure. Yeah, I was going to say I understood it to mean that wherever the reference to the 12-month limit, we would replace that with 24 months. Yes. Which, is a good, which is a good amendment. Okay, just good, okay. That was my intention. Yeah. Is uh, Carol Needler available? <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes, mm -hmm. hello. Hi, I'm Carol Needler. I live at 2016 South 4th Street. I'm a member of the Springfield Icon Steering Committee and a member of their Problem Properties Committee. Thank you, Alderman Haynauer, for speaking out about problem properties and for demanding a solution that holds problem property owners accountable. Problem properties are not just an inner city issue. They affect all wards. This ordinance holds the promise of addressing many of Icon's concerns about problem properties. There are other city council members, past members, and volunteers who have worked diligently to address chronic problem property issues. And I appreciate their input, expertise, and hard work. And I sympathize with their frustration at the lack of progress. ICON has been tracking problem properties and the public works inspection and administrative court processes for 10 years. Last year, we crafted additional changes to the city's problem property ordinances with the assistance of an attorney whose input helped ensure that our changes honor due process and are consistent with legal practices. 
We provided those changes to Alderwoman Erin Conley, and we look forward to supporting her proposed ordinance changes in the future. Public Works tells us that the majority of Springfield residents comply quickly once they understand their responsibilities. ICON has been encouraging responsible property ownership with city residents through next door, through other forums, and with Public Works door hangers in our own neighborhoods. Last year, we created a checklist, Be a Good Neighbor and Tenant, for a Springfield Community Relations workshop for landlords and tenants. However, for the relatively small number of repeat offenders who have a major negative impact, our research <laughs> clear, clearly shows that it will be imperative to have unwavering and consistent enforcement of this and other nuisance and health ordinances by city legal and administrative law judges. This includes consistent application of fines to deter future problems, especially by chronic offenders, with a goal of prevention, not just abatement. I ask you to vote for Ordinances 2020-232 and also 2020-233. But that's not all. Long-standing problems have led to a culture where it's okay to dump your garbage next to your neighbor's bedroom window and to allow such problems to continue in neighborhoods for years. Fixing such problems is a work in progress. I'm also asking you to make a commitment to improvement by regularly monitoring and reviewing the effort and impact of these and other ordinances. We suggest a quarterly report to answer the question, is the solution working as intended? When codes are enforced and applied consistently, the resulting improvements will change the culture of our city so that living in Springfield will mean having a safe home and a good quality of life for all Springfield residences. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion on the ordinance as amended? <clears throat> all those in favor of the ordinance as amended, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The clerk will now call the roll. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderman Woman Turner. Yes. Alderman Fulgenzi. Aye. Alderman Proctor. Yes. Alderwoman DeCenso. Yes. Alderman McMiniman. Aye. Alderwoman Conley. Aye. Alderman Donnellan. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Ten ayes and no nays, Mayor. Thank you. The ordinance passes as amended. Next item on the agenda is number 2020-233, an ordinance amending chapter 170, section 170.17.01B of the 1988 City of Springfield Code of Ordinances as amended pertaining to solid waste. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-233 on final passage. So move. Second. Second. Have moved and second. <coughs> Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderwoman Turner. Yes. Alderman Fulgenzi. Aye. Alderman Proctor. Yes. Alderwoman DeCenso. Yes. Alderman McMiniman. Aye. Alderwoman Connolly. Yes. Alderman Donnellan. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Ten ayes and no nays, Mayor. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is number 2020-235, an ordinance approving the appointment of Erica Austin to the Housing Policy Advisory Council. Chair will entertain a motion. Place agenda number 2020-235 on final passage. Mayor, I make a motion. We uh, send this back to committee. Second. With the rest of them. And move and second to send back to committee. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to suspend the rules and place on first reading agenda number 2020-253, an ordinance amending chapter 33, section 33.002 of the 1988 City of Springfield Code of Ordinances as amended pertaining to boards and commissions. So move. 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 Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Is there any unfinished, is there another one that I need to add, or is that it? That is it. Sir. Okay. Any unfinished business come before the city council? Any uh, new business come before city council? 
Alderwoman DeCenso, and then Alderman Gregory and Alderwoman Turner. Excuse me. I'm just going to be very quick with this. Um, we have a speeding problem in the city. It is increasingly worse, especially in older neighborhoods. I hear about it all the time from constituents and um, you know, a speed study doesn't do anything. I, I, I would think this would be a cash cow for the city right now because you could park a car just about anywhere in Ward 6 and find plenty of people speeding. So I would just like to bring that to your attention. Um, we've had problems on Glenwood. We've had problems, problems on state. There's lots of families on these streets, lots of kids running around and I'm concerned and we, we need to slow down. Alderman, Han or Alderman Gregory and then Alderman Turner and then Alderman Hanauer. I just wanted to I just wanted to remind uh, everyone it is uh, we are having our Juneteenth parade this weekend. It is free. Hopefully the weather holds up and looks good. And we don't have another downpour like we did last year, but we'll work it out either way. Um, it is free. It is a new route from um, Martin Luther King and Capitol um, across Reconciliation Way or 11th Street as we know it. Um, to to the state capitol for a short program, mm -hmm. um, and then as well uh, after that, that'll start at 10, 10 a.m. Um, and then after that, starting at approximately 2 p.m. downtown is Black Restaurant Week, um, which is a, another portion of uh, Juneteenth celebration hosted by the Springfield Black Chamber of Commerce. Mr. Watson and his team has done a fabulous job coordinating that. Um, and I wanted to just just uh, bring to the light. Um, I sent everybody an email um, of, of a young lady from Springfield. She won a national contest, um, and her design for COVID for the COVID relief, COVID nineteen relief efforts, uh, was selected by by Ralph Lowe and Polo. Um, and she is she is here from Springfield, um, Miss Miss Mickey Smith. And and I just wanted to. Uh, congratulate her. I'm sure um, some of the other ladies were, and I'm sorry, um, um, but I, I just wanted to make sure that, that I congratulated her um, as I have seen that in Facebook. That's that's a real big deal. Um, so, so again, correct, congratulations. And uh, the restaurant's opened on uh, this weekend is Anchors Away on Capitol Avenue, Boyd's New Generation Family Style Restaurant, South Grand. Jerk Shop Go on Fifth Street, MJ Fish and Chicken Express on Enos, Miss D's Kitchen and Grill on 11th Street, uh, Nikki's Southern Style Kitchen on South Grand, and PT's Barbecue on Martin Luther King in South Grand. But yeah, congratulations to Nikki Smith. That's a, a great honor uh, with regards to that national recognition. So thank you. Uh, Alderman Hanauer? Yeah, to, to or, go. I'm sorry, was it Alderman, Alderman Turner first, then Alderman Hanauer? If my memory serves Go me ahead, because really mine is new business, so right. okay. uh, that's okay. Uh, to go along with uh, with Alderwoman DeCenso's, uh, the city also has a very bad, bad situation going on with people running red lights, as my colleague here knows. We, uh, I know we can't do red light cameras because the state won't allow, but I'll tell you what, it, if we could, I'd bring them up for a vote right now because people do not stop at red lights in this town. It's, it's, I've seen it too many times, whereas if, if you're starting to pull out and you see some, someone coming, and I don't know what, to, what can be done because we can't have a police officer at every red light or at every light, but um, it's bad in, in uh just, I would. It'd be interesting to see the number of accidents that have that have occurred because of people running the light. Um, and I've seen it out on. I've seen it all over town. It's not just, not just the highways. It's it's all over town. So I, I'm just going to bring that up. Um, and uh, you know, not much we can do about it. Well, we'll bring it to the chief's attention, and then um, I don't know if synchronizing lights would help or not. But there'll be some. Uh, I know uh, Nate Bottom's working on uh, that type of project throughout the city. Any uh, new business come before the council? Alderwoman Turner. Okay. Um, so 
So we all know that, that Springfield was a real pioneer with regard to the way that we went about with our legalization of recreational, recreational cannabis. Um, there are a number of cities in, in, in the state that, are, that look to us for uh, guidance as they said about doing uh, what we've already done. And when I talked about that, I always talked about the fact that when Governor Pritzker um, set about to legalize recreational cannabis, he really fashioned it around uh, criminal justice reform as well with his uh, Illinois Criminal Justice Restore, Reinvent, and Renew program. So um, I know that in, with regard to what has been happening around the nation and in Springfield over the last few weeks, I have been doing a lot of research about what we can do as a city with regard to community investment. And I call it community investment because I don't know that we can say reinvestment because I don't know that there's been a lot of investment to reinvest on. So uh, I know that was just an aside, sorry. Uh, so I did in, in my research, uh, the uh, Illinois Criminal Justice Information Restore, Reinvest and Renew program has a has a a grant program that I really think that Springfield could benefit from, especially uh, it, working in uh, collaboration with what Autumn and Gregory and I are trying to do with uh, community investment. So um, the 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 grant program has is two different areas. One of them is a service delivery grant, and there are five program areas, but it, the ones that I think really would be of interest to us are economic development, violence prevention, and youth development, things that we talk about all the time, but we always say that we don't have money to do any of these things. So this is a real opportunity, and the, the grant amounts are between 25000 and uh, just a little over $700,000. So the other, uh, the other one is an assessment and planning grant. And I know people talk about, well, we assess and we plan all the time, but I think that this is an opportunity to assess and plan with an eye to really doing something with the plan once we, once we have one to work with. And we already know where we wanna go. We just really need some financial support to help, help get us there. And again, there are five different areas, but I think the area that really uh, speaks to what we want to do here is violence prevention and youth development. And the uh, amount available for that is $25,000 to a little over $80,000. And the reason why I bring this up tonight under new business is because um, it's very timely that the notice of intent has to be filed by July 5th, which is just a little over a month. And so I would ask the mayor if I can work with uh, Director Yazel to uh, put together a letter of intent and we see where we can go with this. I just think that we are at a tipping point in our community and we cannot allow this time in our history to pass without making some real attempt at change. And one of the ways that we do that is, is I know that uh, when we look at what we need to do around law enforcement, that's one piece of it, but that's only one piece of it. And community investment is a significant, significant piece of it. Because if we set about investing in our communities, a lot of the issues that we have that are companion to law enforcement are mitigated. So I, I think that this is the real opportunity. Um, again, Governor Prisker showed a lot of forethought when he uh, said about the, the recreational cannabis uh, legislation. This is a tangible result of that that will benefit our community um, in, a real, in a real way. So um, Mayor, can I do that? Can I work with? Uh, Director Yazel, and we see what we can, where we can go with it. Yeah, actually, uh, we'll do one better. You can work with myself and Alderman Gregory because, uh, as we've all known, uh, that's one of the priority areas, core areas. And what we need to do is connect our resources economically, 
Uh, I know there's a lot of interest, and this proves the importance of the TIF, which we've taken action upon. Uh, we've had conversations uh, with regards to dilapidated properties. Actually, Daryl Harris is looking at the properties that we could obtain and uh, save them instead of having them demolished, try to save the character of the neighborhoods. So that's one aspect of the development, uh, you know, partnering with an entity that uh, Alderman Gregory's been working with, Pastor Doss, as well as Calvin Pitts on the training center on South Grand. and providing that uh, workforce training uh, through not only the classroom, but hands-on by restoring property. So that grant will help uh, provide those resources as well as a tip. But the other area that uh, we've known as problem properties is, uh, well, Comer Cox Park. And that is ripe for youth development, as you brought up, uh, right in there in that whole area. When you talk about hubs or uh, innovation areas, that should be the one that we zero in on because, uh, especially for the young people, you know, we have the Boys and Girls Club as one anchor, and then on the other side, you have the uh, Gold's Gym, uh, Salvation Army Community Center, but you have this vast property. Unfortunately, it's not in our jurisdiction. We used to own it, uh, Comer Cox Park, as well as Chamberlain, uh, but that whole area is ripe for development. So we'll take a look at that uh, piece as far as, uh, and then also, you know, the TSB Hope uh, plan that's been on the shelf for ages and how do we uh, you know, use dollars to bring that, update that plan and uh, put it to use. But uh, by all means, uh, all of us working together, that's what it's going to take. And it's just not government, as you know. It's going right. to take the private sector for investment because I think it's uh, with the opportunity zones, uh, which include not only the east side, but uh, near north side as well. But uh, there's just a lot of work, as you said, to be done. And now we have this window of opportunity that we have to take full advantage of. So. Be so, a we can put in a no, so we can put in a notice of intent to apply, right? Oh, we're going to do it, no doubt about it, okay, in many great. different facets, right. Great. But I think okay. uh, the whole thing is, I think it should be, uh, and we'll uh, actually print it out. I'm going to read it in detail, but there's uh, so many facets. And I think we're, what hurts us at times is being disjointed. We really need to, I think, an umbrella approach, uh, all-encompassing approach, even if it's phased in, uh, but it's important that we move in that direction to really change the lives of our young people and others right there, right now. So, Alderman Gregory? I'm excited. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. Good. Let's get this letter done. Let's do it. <laughs> well, that's that's the easy part. <laughs> no. Alderman no, Gregory? No. Do you have any comments, Alderman Gregory? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just excited to, you know, to, to address uh, the changes that we need from every angle, like uh, Alder Woman was, uh, Turner was saying, and I uh, frequent conversations with Alder Woman Desenzo and Conley, just, just about, you know, bouncing ideas on how we, we really attack true change. I've talked to you as well and Chief, and, you know, I'm just excited and, and, and you know, I, I want us to keep acting and keep taking those steps and, and put action behind our words, and I, 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 I think we're all committed. Uh, to doing that, and I'm, I'm excited to be a part of it. So I appreciate you guys. So, okay, so so just so, I, and I and I don't want to mean to take up everybody's time to delve into this right now. So um, so so the 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 letter of intent and the application is going to be written by the mayor's office. So not We're, office of economic. We'll coordinate it, of course, the grant writers and OPED, but uh, we will coordinate that because it's uh, multifaceted. Actually, we've asked for some uh, private entities to uh, uh, help with the initiative as well, write the grant, uh, especially when we're talking about LED lighting and how do we move to smart city status. So that's a different dynamic altogether because it speaks to the safety aspect. Uh, the other one is with regards to planning, things of that nature. So there's it's multifaceted, so it's going to... It's going to be a group effort uh, that goes beyond the city. You know, uh, we'll have to have others involved with that process. But by all means, yeah, uh, the letters of intent would be helpful. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. I just don't want us to get. I just don't want us to lose this now because I know that we're 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 thinking big and we're thinking outside the box. But I I think that we it's, we have a very small window of opportunity, so we need to. And I'll utilize be, the, you know, we need to do what we can. And I'll quickly. just uh, point it out. I agree because uh, it's kind of frustrating on the the reason 
this is near and dear to my heart because of the priority. I know we had a grant opportunity for a road project and unfortunately they didn't put the road project on the east side that I wanted to put forward first. It was a different one, and uh, but uh, that's been, uh, fortunately there's another road opportunity at the end of the month. And so uh, it's for the uh, kind of uh, uh, modernizing, not to the full content, but as much as what we could do. Uh, for those roads that needed it for a long time. So that's, uh, you really have to have that priority preference and that's what we intend to do. Uh, all, you know, all of us here around the horseshoe understand the significance of the governing magazine. And, uh, you know, we were ranked number one post pandemic, which was uh, uh, great uh, for a number of reasons. One is because of the governor's proactive measures with the coronavirus. I think, you know, spring, uh, Illinois rather, is uh, decreasing faster than other states. That's why it's important we all stay vigilant with regards to our safety precautions. But the other side of it is it was just more than that. It was the affordability of Springfield. It was about our ability to work remotely, uh, you know, our uh, diversity with regards to job opportunities, things of that nature. So we uh, have so much more to uh, build upon and that's what's incumbent upon all of us to really bring it all together, integrate it as much as possible so we all can uh, move forward and maximize our resources. Alderwoman DeCenso? Um, I support everything that Alderwoman Turner has said. Um, I just want to make sure that, you know, as we talk about wards two and wards, wards three, we always put them in this box. And if there's anything we've learned in the last few weeks is that we are your allies. We are here. We are you know, wanting to make the change with you. So, you know, whatever we can do to help, please don't forget that we are here to back you up. And, you know, if we're, if we're gonna change Springfield and if we're gonna change the way things work around here um, and around the world, then we all need to stand up together and say, we're gonna do this. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. That's good to hear because we'll have a resolution coming forward, I think, with some action items on it. And uh, that's so true. It has to be everybody's buy-in because uh, it is a community-wide effort uh, to improve all areas of our community, especially with the inner city, and move forward in that direction. So thank you very much. Any other new business? Uh, let's not forget Father's Day uh, this, oh, this uh, right. Sunday for the fathers, Father's grandfathers, Day. and great-grandfathers out there. Yep. Thank you very much. Happy Father's Day, everybody. Thank you. There's a, a couple of other announcements. There's a donation drive Saturday, June 20th from noon to 3. Uh, Coral is hosting a donation drive at the Church of the Brethren, 2115 Yale Boulevard. Donations will be will benefit Central Illinois Food Bank, the Phoenix Center, and Fifth Street Renaissance Sarah Center. Uh, for more information being collected, you can visit their Facebook, uh, Springfield Coral. And then United Way Day of Action, that's this week, uh, United Way's Day of Action. Uh, due to the coronavirus, uh, they usually had people go out in groups, but there's a special virtual event, and they have various activities mm -hmm. that you can do at home or from your desk. So if you visit uh, Springfield, I'm sorry, www.springfieldunitedway.org for more details. And then tomorrow's Facebook Live will feature Ward 1 Alderman Chuck Redpath and Ward 3 Alderwoman Doris Turner. Uh, it takes place at noon on the city's Facebook page. And then just as a reminder, the census is continuing. We ask that everybody uh, take time to fill out their census form and uh, please promote it to others as much as possible. Uh, whether you own or rent your house, make sure that you uh, count. Everyone does because uh, really it impacts uh, the proceeds we receive from the federal government as well as our representation, representation up in Washington. So it's important that we all participate. And right now Springfield's at 66 0.5% of the population who's responded. So we'd like to hit that 70 plus mark, if we could. Alderman Hanauer, you have uh, anything? How is it with the plexiglass? You look farther away. How is it? It's uh, He's in isolation. It's, it's interesting. <laughs> it's, it's definitely interesting. It's a penalty box. <laughs> So uh, we'll have those up for everybody, I think, at the end of the month, uh, because uh, July we'll be able to all come back, uh, who's able to anyway, so uh, into the council chambers as we move into the phase four. So any other uh, new business or any other discussion? Motion to adjourn. No, we got yep. Is there anybody signed up to speak? Uh, Tom, Chi, is anybody there to speak? Yes, please. 
two people signed up for, uh, to speak. Uh, we have uh, Randall Lewis. Okay. Yeah, if you join us and state your name and address for the council, we'd appreciate it. Good evening. My name is Randy Lewis. I live at 1518 East Adams, Springfield, Illinois. I would like to thank the, the mayor and all the older women and older men for uh, letting me speak at this time. Yep, go ahead. Okay. My uh, concerns was over the weekend. I live across the street from Common Cox Park. Um, I think the police officers dropped the ball on this weekend because the simple fact of it is when everything was kicking off, I kept on asking them, I said, where is your help? They kept on responding to me the whole weekend. Call your alderman. I said, what does my alderman have to do with 600 people in the park? They said, well, from your alderman and from our commander, we were told to stand down. And also from several conversations I had with the police, that they said that they knew about this block party so-called this weekend because they got a flyer. They had a flyer and they said it was from 10 until, and I said, from 10 until when? 10 in the morning or 10 in the evening? Because if it's at 10 in the evening, you guys should have stopped it from when you first seen the flyer, you know? And that doesn't make sense for no one over here that we all been here for over 30 years, homeowners, to have to stand in our driveway and stop four-wheelers and stop people from driving through our yards at three or four o'clock in the morning. And when this kicked off, it was surreal, really, really was, because when you see five or 600 people out in front of your house and it's three o'clock in the morning, I don't, I don't know what to say about that. And I just think that the police dropped the ball on this because when they tell you that they knew about it and then they kept on saying, Alderman, call your Alderman. First of all, they didn't understand or didn't even know that Alderman Gregory, when we woke up Saturday morning, was out there by himself picking up garbage. And we all went out there and he had some other people with him helping him. Also, he had a member of the park district helping him. That's uncalled for. That is uncalled for. That is, should be embarrassing to the city of Springfield for your police department to sit there and say, call your alderman. And our commander told us to stand down. They only allocated three people for over here at this park tonight. Come on now, that's not, that's not real. Yeah, as far as uh, I can't speak to the uh, directive, I know uh, we met Chief uh, Winslow and myself and Alderman Turner and Gregory uh, met to discuss this very issue. And so uh, we, uh, the chief has had conversation with the park district uh, to get additional help. So we are uh, putting, uh, there, will be, there will be more this weekend, but uh, most importantly is how do we go forward in the future with to address uh, the other remedies. I mean, there's, uh, there's issues with uh, some of the convenience stores. I mean, uh, you know, God forbid we had the uh, young man that got gunned down on uh, uh, 11th and Laurel. You know, that's, uh, I grew up on 1700, right there on the corner of uh, Laurel and Whittier. So it's, uh, you know, we have to take a deep dive into preventative measures. I've uh, talked to the mayor of Decatur. They have, uh, you know, similar issues, not to the size that we have, uh, but they've had uh, significant issues uh, related to that. So, um, when you have individuals that number, you have to get it on the forefront. And I know Chief Winslow's looking at how we can do that and uh, move forward in that direction. But this is, you know, we're just at the start of summer. And um, that's what we intend to do is try to uh, uh, come up with a process and try to come up with preventable, preventable measures. But it's going to uh, be, you know, something that's ongoing. And how do we make sure that we protect the public as uh, much as possible in those situations? So I don't know if Alderman Gregory or uh, Alderman Turner sure. have anything to add to that. Sure. Uh, Mr. Lewis, I thank you for your time and I, I thank you for your help over the weekend. I, I uh, definitely hear your concerns and the concerns of the community and, and, and I can assure you that um, if, if it was a case to call me, I appreciate you calling me and, and I can promise you that, that um, we have sat down with our, our chief and, um, and, and 
come up with the game plan for this weekend. And, you know, I do agree with the mayor. We do have some other things to address to sort of uh, help help this out and help our officers out. Um, you know, I, 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 I stand for, for peace in our community and justice in our community, regardless of, 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 of you know, things that go on. So, so I, I just want to encourage everybody to, to make sure that we're responsible. And, and um, you know, I'm going to do my part um, out in the community. I'm going I'm to try to be, continue to be a positive influence to our young people. I get it. I've been there. Um, and, and, and we're going to help them be safe and, and, and encourage everybody just to stay home and then and, and, um, not do those things in, in our community. So um, we'll work hard at it. I'm going to work hard at it, Mr. Lewis. And, and uh, you know, I'll be, I'll be to see you guys soon. Thank you. Alderman, Alderman Gregory, I'd like to appreciate, I want to listen, let you know that I appreciate you and your support that you have given over here, not only in this area, but for War Two. But I, the, it was just grave concerns for all of us over here. We spoke to you and that when you seen how they, you wasn't here, but I stood out in my front yard Friday night and Saturday night, six hours pleading with my neighbors for more help because every, everybody knows that the park closes at a certain time. You know, and I asked the police officer, again, he also kept on saying that the park police don't have, don't have nothing to do with this. And I said, well, let me tell you something, man. They get ready to start fighting over here because you can hear, you can stand in my yard and hear everything. And those who know where I live at can, can surely say, I know Randy heard it. But then as soon as everything kicked off and they started shooting, because my concern was to the police officer, man, what are you gonna do if something break out? By that time, the shooting started and it was probably a hundred yards from me and I was in my front yard, the police officer, both of us took off running. My God, next thing you know, you know, I ran in my house, my lady was with me, she fell on the ground, I turned around, my heart dropped to my feet because I thought she had got shot. You know, and I'm asking her, are you hit? She says, no, I'm all right. Do you, we don't have to live like that over here. We don't not, we do not have to live like that over here. And I appreciate you, Alderman. I appreciate all the women, the older men, getting behind this young man and getting behind the city of Springfield. I hope that the police department shows some better uh, judgment this weekend coming up. But this is mm -hmm. this will be the fifth weekend. What about the previous four? So I hope this is all together now. I hate to see this happen again, but you know you you can't just live like this. And you can't have your police officer, the ones that are supposed to protect and serve, tell you over and over again, call your alderman. Because like right. I told him, there's nothing Sean can do with 600 people by himself. So I'm just disappointed, disgusted, but I also am willing to work with everyone to see that this problem doesn't happen again. And I appreciate you guys letting me talk. Thank you. Thank you. All the Thank you. Turner. So so I, I, I just want to say, um, Randy, I hear you and I understand what you're saying. And uh, I know it's no consolation, but I have a, a similar situation of, in Ward 3. So it's, it's in various places throughout the city. And it's unfortunate um, because it does lead to um, not only property damage, but it leads to uh, loss of life. And, and 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 people getting getting hurt, uh, you know, and things that you can't come back from. You you, you know, you just can't come back from it. So I, I do want to say though that it's 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 definitely not accurate that Alderman Gregory or myself ever said to anyone, uh, a law enforcement officer or anyone else, that we are condone those act, that activity. We certainly never said that. We certainly never said that we approve of it. We certainly never said that we didn't want law enforcement to address it. That was never, ever said. Uh, both of us are, you know, 10 toes down that it's, it's inappropriate and we're going to do everything that we can to stop it and get it under, get it under control. So having said that, we did have uh, what I thought was a very productive meeting on um, Monday. 
with uh, uh, Alderman Gregory, myself, um, Chief Winslow, and the mayor, and also uh, Corporation Council Zirkle. And I say Corporation Council Zirkle because it was the situation where we, I, I feel like we uh, were able to ask, ask that some real uh, things happen in real time. And Corporation Council was there to say, you know, I'm going to look into it and I will get back to you. And he did, he got back to me with some answers on some things today. So we are working very diligently to have some things in place by this weekend. We're talking about uh, by Thursday so that, you know, we, we are trying to address it as best we can. So we hear you, we hear your neighbors, we hear the, the cries of the neighbors on 25th Street and, and Manor, and we are doing everything that we can to address it. I also wanna say that, you know, while we have to hold residents accountable, we also have to hold these businesses accountable too, because we, we can't give them a pass and allow them to have, now the situation that happened at Comer Cox Park, that's that's one thing, but we also have these situations where people, where businesses allow people, you know, two and 300 people to conjugate on their property. And we can't, you know, we have to get a handle on, on that as well. And there's no reason for, you know, the situation that happened at Seven Brothers, there's no reason for a convenience store to be open three, four, six o'clock in the morning. There, there's just no reason for that. So we're working very diligently to not only put some things in place to hold residents accountable, we're also working to put some things in place to hold businesses and business owners accountable as well. I appreciate you. Yep. Thank you very much, Alder, Alderman. I think uh, Chief Winslow is available to uh, state something. Can, can you hear there me? I can hear you. Uh, Mr. Lewis, first off, I want to thank you for coming out today and uh, uh, I understand the concerns you have and we express those same concerns. This is something we've been dealing with off and on for the last six weeks. They continue to get bigger and bigger through social media at multiple locations. Um, I don't know what the officer said. I don't see, I'm taking your word on what he said about staying down. We have had our conversation with our officers that there's a thousand people or so and you can't go in three and four deep when you only got 20 officers for the whole street or 25 officers for the entire street. And we're dealing with these all across the city plus additional issues. And you shouldn't have to live like that and neither should any of the uh, citizens over there. And we are working diligently as the alderman and the alderman said about trying to get a plan together. We know we're gonna move it. We know we'll move it, but it's gonna be in somebody else's neighborhood. What we really need here is we need the citizens of Springfield to come forward and tell our young people that even though we know there's a pandemic going along on right now and there's no place to go, that there's no clubs open, there's no place to go, that going to the park and going to residential neighborhoods and throwing these types of parties that, that usually turn violent is not an option. We cannot do that. And we have to stop that throughout our entire community. And the police department cannot do that alone. I could bring 100 officers in this weekend and we're still gonna have this issue somewhere in our community. And we're gonna do that. We're gonna have plenty of manpower out there and we're gonna be taking people to jail. And that's not what we want to do. We don't want to be arresting people. We don't want to be out there, uh, you know, giving people a bunch of citations because we know they're they're tired. We understand they want something to do. But this is not an option. And we agree with you 100%. What I'm going to ask from you, as well as those neighbors around there, we're going to need your assistance. Some of the things we've already talked about, I've uh, had a conversation with Alderman Gregory, Alderman Turner. People will be reaching out to your neighborhood right there. Some of the things we're going to do are going to be an inconvenience to you in order to keep people out of that neighborhood. We ask for you to work with us. Um, we'll be reaching out to you probably tomorrow and discuss some of these options as well as the other neighbors in that area. But we're gonna need your assistance on this in order to make this successful. Additionally, the park police, we have talked to them because Comer Cox does fall in the park jurisdiction. They are gonna be out there with us. They have dedicated some manpower to help us on this. But again, this cannot be just a law enforcement issue. This is a community problem that's going on for 25 years and it's only grown bigger and bigger because of the advent of social media. Because as soon as we go to one area and shut it down, they're already on social media saying where the next location they're going to. So we know that's what's gonna happen this weekend. We're gonna do our best to control it to uh, the best of our ability. What we really need here is the community to step up together and talk to the people out there typically anywhere from 17 to 30. We need the help of our young people here and those who are influential in our community to help us say, this isn't acceptable. This isn't good. So thank you and I, I apologize for what you had to go through this weekend. Thank you, Chief. 
And I also, I, I would like to uh, say that I would never say nothing that or repeat anything that was untrue or I didn't hear. So, and I questioned that officer twice. And I said, what do you mean by stand down? He said, well, my commanding officer and the alderman said they didn't want nobody to get it, to intervene. And I said, are you serious? And, and that was told to me all weekend. So I think that uh, I'm not blaming the officers because I spoke to them and I watched it in their face. They were, so, they were disgusted. Uh, some of them felt un very uncomfortable and I don't blame them, but, and they were outnumbered. But if we were to stop this, when that young lady officer told me that she knew before this happened, I can't understand. And please somebody tell me if you knew this was gonna happen and you see a flyer that says 10 o'clock in the evening, why wasn't you prepared? Well, like I said, uh, we did have a heads up on it. We gave that information to the park police to, as well to share that information. Uh, we did have officers out there um, the bottom line is that, you know, we got to do better there. You know, you're right. The problem is we have to get out there before they get out there. And, but we also have regular calls for service we have to handle as well. We will do better this weekend and we will try to go forward. And as far as what the officer said, I can't, you know, that's something we're going to look into. Uh, cause that wasn't an inappropriate question, you know, or answer to you, you know, the, the answer should have been something to the effect that, like I said, it may be some breakdown in the communication between the supervisors. I don't know, but the, you know, the concerns that we're having right now is that again, you're not going to send four or five officers into a group once it gets that big. Obviously, if you can get in there when there's only 25, 30, that's what you got to do. You can't be waiting until it's six, seven hundred deep to try to go in there with four or five officers, especially with all the tension that's going on in our community right now and across the nation with law enforcement. So, again, we appreciate the community support. We appreciate the, uh, the council's support, and we will do better this weekend. Right. One thing, one more thing I'm going to say is, speaking about this COVID, if you had 600 kids out there, and I've seen 600, and I can say every one of them was mask didn't have a mask on so then they go home to their parents house to their grandparents house we don't have a chance we don't we don't want to tell our kids our grandkids don't come over you know but i i'm, I'm not going to just keep on repeating myself hey, I, I appreciate the police department i appreciate you chief i appreciate all the all the women i appreciate all the all the men i appreciate the mayor but we as a community we have to keep our feet 10 toes down like like miss Alderman uh, Woman's uh, Turner said, and we can go from there. I agree 100%. Thank you, That's sir. That's a good point about the uh, coronavirus, and um, you know we need to try to educate them somehow. I mean, that's uh, that's something they don't think about, um, but that's something we have to try to um, make known. But as Chief said, uh, we do we did uh, discuss it with the Alderman Woman Turner and Alderman Gregory, and uh, will be a different situation this weekend. Well, I, I appreciate everyone for uh, letting me speak, and uh, I understand that you guys' hands are full. So you have my support, and I'm pretty sure everybody over here support. Before you go, uh, who did the Rosa Parks drawing behind you? John Crisp. Oh, he's good. Yep. Yes, he is. That's very All good. All my art in my house is from John Crisp. Yep. Well, thank so, you very much. I appreciate you. I appreciate everyone for listening. You too. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Bye bye. All right, Lou. All right, now. And then there's uh, one more you said, Tom? Tom Chi? Is there someone else? Uh, uh, yep. Yep. I uh, Adelaide, but she did not join, and also Alice Ramey, and she did not join as well. She's probably waiting until she can come in person. Yeah. So, <laughs> any other discussion? Motion for adjournment? Motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Both right. and A, we're adjourned. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Happy Father's Day, everybody. Thank you.